Hey there, CPO here, and I think this is a video a lot of you have been waiting for, which is the basic tricopter assembly. This is going to be putting the body together, putting the ESCs in, getting the arms on, um, all of that basic fundamental stuff, including the camera and battery tray. It's going to be a little bit random because it's more of a prototyping session than it is anything else. Uh, keeping in mind, while I'm taking a lot of design ideas from other builds, um, I'm really working on my own design, which means I'm going to have to try some things and see what works. So you may see me do something that I undo later. But in the end, I'll give you uh, what I have right now is my completed tricopter build. Uh, and then, uh, you know, minus the uh, the flight controller, which is coming up next. But uh, just, uh, you know, follow along if you if you like. I'll try and make the, uh, the stuff that didn't work out pretty quick. Uh, but uh, I'll show you my process of putting this thing together. So starting right here, um, you can see my goal is to mount the three ESCs inside the body. And uh, I laid out motor one and motor two. And, and there is a distinction. Motor 1 is going to be on the left side. Motor 2 is going to be on the right side. But more importantly than that, Motor 1 is the ESC that has the power wire still in the flight controller connection uh, cable. So I need to make sure I know which one is which. And uh, the other thing you'll notice is I drew a pencil mark to show the sweeping uh, position of the arms. So that way, as I'm designing, I don't end up putting wires or parts in a place that's going to be in the way of the moving arms. So I have to be real careful to make sure that I have clearance for that. So the ESCs for motor 1 and motor 2 were pretty easy to sort out. Motor 3, which is the tail uh, motor, was a little bit more complicated to avoid that sweeping uh, area. So what I ended up doing, uh, and I'll give you a little spoiler alert, is I ended up drilling a hole right between those two sweeping marks and then pushing those uh, battery connection wires, the power wires for the ESC, down into the bottom of the tricopter and that just gets them out of the way. Here I was working on trying to get them to, to sweep back somehow uh, to be with the rest of the ESC electronics but it just wasn't working out uh, in a way that I was liking. I did end up using a zip tie to sort of mm, contain the motor wires a little bit. So going back to ESCs for one and two, I ended up using hot glue to fasten them down to the body. Um, I think this will be okay. I don't think that they generate enough heat to be a problem and the hot glue was easy to uh, to do and with that uh, heavy shrink tubing that I put on there it just locked in really great. I did try like a double stick tape and I wasn't real happy with it uh, and the uh, the hot glue just seemed to to work. So taking a quick look at what didn't work um, I did put the ESC for motor 3 on uh, just like you see here with the motor wires actually just kind of uh, zip tied and then pushed back into uh, the body. Turns out the ESC wires that I put on here were not long enough to have this sort of a reach so I didn't really account for that um, when I set the length of my ESC wires because I didn't know how I was going to mount them. So once I got them in position, I realized, oh wait, these wires aren't going to be long enough. So rather than redoing the wires, I rethought my strategy. So one of the things I really wanted to do was have the ESC to motor wires for the front two arms coming out of the top of the tricopter. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to be able to have it so that when the arms pivoted, the wire stayed out of the way, um, but it was nice and tidy in either either end with not a lot of extra uh, slop of wires. So you can see here, I drilled a hole uh, and glued in a grommet in the center of the uh, of the tricopter top, and eventually that got changed. That was a design change where I went with two um, grommets, one for each. ESC and the reason is I found that whenever I actually tried to assemble the tricopter there was just too much uh, wire right there in that one center point it was it wasn't able to uh, freely and easily uh, go into assembly so uh, I spread that out a little bit later on by using two different grommets so I'll jump ahead a little bit to uh, a little bit more of a completed uh, assembly stage 
And basically what you can see here is I have the two grommets that are coming out the sides and I put those between the, uh, the holes that are already in place on the, the top and then you can see where I have those uh, wires for ESC number three poking out the bottom and that'll just connect into my battery wiring harness. Uh, and uh, I think this design is going to work out really nice you can see the power wires for ESCs 1 and 2 shoot out the back alongside the tail boom and then the flight controller uh, connection cables from all three ESCs are going to come out at an angle next to the tail boom uh, but out of the way of the scissor action of the folding arms. So here I'm roughing in some of the screws just to get a feel for um, how things are going to, to look. And these side screws um, actually um, are going to go in the other way. They're going to go in upside down uh, that I'm putting in now. And those are going to be used for several purposes. Uh, frame rigidity one, uh, it's going to be uh, holding in the ESC wires and keeping everything from coming out the sides. It's going to be used for mounting the camera and battery tray. And it's also going to be used for mounting the flight controller. So there are a total of four of these screws that are going to be used for all of those purposes. So now I'm fastening the arms to the body and as you can uh, see here and recall from the designs the pivoting screw, the one that the arms pivot on, is the one closest to the point of the body design. I also make sure to make a quick peek as I'm getting things tightened down to make sure that uh, all of my wires are out of the way and there's nothing interfering with the rotation of the arms. So here I'm working on uh, doing the final tightening and I found with this uh, plywood body design you can really tighten it down more than you need to. Um, so there's going to be a point where the wood begins to warp a little bit and you're really um, maybe going too tight. So you just have to get a feel for where the right amount of tightness is. So my design has three screws that hold the tail boom in place. One of them is the indexing screw uh, that actually uh, goes through the hole in the boom. And then the other two are what clamps on the sides to hold it straight and also provide some rigidity to the frame structure. I guess I should mention what size screws I'm using. These are all three millimeter screws and I'm using a 25 millimeter length for most of the body parts so basically Anything that's just going in through the uh, top plate, a boom, and then a bottom plate, I'm using a 25 millimeter. I think that that was a perfect length, uh, and I'm using uh, lock nuts uh, to, uh, to hold them in place. You might be able to get away with a 20 millimeter once everything's compressed, uh, but 25 uh, seemed to be a, a more reasonable uh, size for me. But you can see I've got a little bit of, of length there uh, afterwards because the wood actually deforms and compresses a little bit more than I expected. Uh, and the um, screws that go in for the flight controller and the camera mount and all of that are going to be 30 millimeters in length. They're a little bit longer. And of course, I'm putting those in upside down as well, and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. So here's where things get a little bit interesting and creative. I'm trying to come up with a way to do the camera uh, and battery tray that is simple uh, and, and functional. And there are a lot of methods out there for stabilization of the camera and vibration reduction and all of that vibration dampening. Uh, and some of them are fairly complicated. Um, so I like David Vendestall's uh, version with the, uh, the bent uh, music wire, but I've got to admit that's a little bit of a complicated design. So I would originally bought these uh, gigantic zip ties to use as landing gear. But it came to me that I may be able to use those for uh, vibration dampening mounts of the camera and battery tray. They're flexible yet rigid, uh, and I think that they will um, work well. So uh, this is something I haven't seen before and obviously haven't been able to test myself, but uh, I'm going to give it a try, and I think it's going to work out, um, but time will tell. 
So let's take a quick look at the actual battery and camera tray. I cut out a 50 millimeter by 240 millimeter rectangle. It could have been a little bit longer, but I did some quick field of view testing with my GoPro, and I think this length will work well for me. So then I drilled some holes that align with the holes on the body. And basically I have the camera mount lined up with the rear uh, edge of the tricopter body. And then I've got these holes at about 12 and a half millimeters from the outside edges. And then I'm going to drill them out with a drill bit large enough for my mega zip tie to fit through just barely. So I basically cut the length of these so that I could have 190 millimeters between uh, two holes. And they're uh, three millimeter holes. So the actual zip tie length is just a little bit longer than that. And, you know, obviously I cut off the, uh, the head of the zip tie. And then I drew a line halfway between the two holes so uh, that I can index it on the camera tray. And you can see here how I'm feeding the zip tie into the camera tray. And I also flatten it down as much as I can once I get it into place. So then the 30 millimeter screw uh, goes in from the bottom of the tricopter up to the top and that will be used to secure the tray. And of course I'm going to do this process for all three of the mounting locations. Now the front mounting location isn't on the flight controller mounts, it's actually going to go on the uh, the front uh, mount which is basically for the spacer and uh, just the frame securing of the front so um, I'm gonna use probably a 25 millimeter screw for that I also need to make sure I put that front spacer block in place as I do this so I know how tight to make those front screws now that I've got the one side secure I'm just gonna fold over the other side so putting the screws up through the inside of the loop and then folding it over and then up through the bottom of the tricopter body. Then of course a, another lock nut on the top to secure it into place. I was worried that getting to these screws would be difficult but it actually works out pretty easily. So here's what I have after getting everything uh, screwed down. As you can see, that front one could probably have a smaller distance between holes. That'll remove some of that angle that's built into there now. But you can see it's a fairly stable, uh, secure mounting uh, location uh, with a little bit of flexibility. And, you know, my battery is a 2200 milliamp 3S that I'm going to use, and I've got plenty of room for it. I'll obviously use battery straps to strap it down uh, to, the, to the tray and then the GoPro would go on the front. So I think that's it for this video. Uh, next I'll show how I did the zip tie landing gear uh, which I thought was really cool. I really like that. Um, but that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.